Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm, and today I'm going to walk you through a Wireshark tip. I'm going to grade this one more on the medium to advanced scale. So just so you know, don't let it dissuade you though. It's a neat little tip that you probably will find a lot of use for, um, even if you don't consider yourself an advanced or more efficient user of Wireshark. So it's an IP octet capture filter and I'm going to get into it in just a bit so don't don't let that throw you off all right so the what's in the whys so I got a call from a client he wanted to capture some packets from his DNS servers now the challenge is that he started an IP addressing scheme now this is always a catch-22 the good news is he has a, an addressing scheme uh, the bad news is uh, the DNS servers end with the same octet but they're on different subnets so it's kind of a challenge the goal is to create a capture filter that would work on any subnet or link. The other issue that he admits his documentation may not be up to date. I'm sure a lot of people fall into that same camp. So a simple host x.x.x.x or host x.y.y.y. This is a uh, capture filter syntax. So that won't work. It's not very practical. He has many, many servers. And again, there's a lot of unknowns or possible unknowns. So this isn't a, um, a good way to go. It's just to string together a bunch of these host XXX commands together. Okay, the plan. I explained that all we have to do is issue a capture filter that only captures packets from that octet. And you'll see in the example here is .180 or .180. Uh, he agreed. Yeah, it sounds simple, but he couldn't figure it out. So we captured some random packets, and then I explained the methodology. And this is the best way to go. So whenever you need to figure out a filter, just capture some packets, uh, and then kind of work backwards from there. And the other way to do it is obviously look up RFCs or uh, scour the internet for you know whatever anybody else has done. But if you got the methodology down pat, just getting a packet and working backwards is the best approach. So you can see that in Wireshark, when I click on this IP header up here, the bytes area, which people who've seen my videos before know I don't spend too much time down here. And here's one example where I do. So you click this header and it highlights the IP header right there. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the start. So now you know where that lives. The first step is to convert decimal to hex. Right, hexadecimal. So in this example, I, I want anything that is x.x.x.180. Dot x dot x dot the x's are wild cards, you could add a star there, whatever, it doesn't matter. And, and that's the key, 180. So 180 may not be helpful because in the bytes uh, screen, you'll see the bytes pane has them in hex. So 180 will not be displayed down here. We have to find it in hex. So we're going to convert it. So 180 decimal equals B4 in hex. Now, uh, the important thing here is if you don't have a decimal to hex, hex to decimal converter, you're a Windows user, you can just use the Windows calculator, change it to programmer mode, and then you'll be able to flip back and forth or just go to a website, whatever's easier for you. So this example, 52.0.240.180 is hex 3400 F0B4. Now, step two. So now we have to figure out where this is in the IP header, right? And and this is where people get lost because they start counting offsets from the beginning of the packet at 0, 0, and that's not the case. This is an IP offset, so it's in the IP header. So that's where you have to start counting from. So we're going to start from here. You can see that 4, 5 is 0 position, 0 byte, and then 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down to 16, 17, 18, 19. The reason why I kind of spelled these last four octets out or bytes is that they correlate with the actual IP address, right? So this is where I want to work. Now, if you just wanted to do the first octet, then obviously you could have done three, four, but then you could have just used a subnet filter for that, blah, blah. So this is just going to help you break this down depending on what you want to accomplish. I'm trying to make this as flexible as I can. So now into the Wireshark capture syntax, right? So when you do a capture syntax, it's different than the display uh, format or syntax. Now, it's really important to not mix the two up. So for the people who just see one equal sign and they're expecting equal equal, well, that's a display filter syntax, right? This is capture filter. So the syntax is simple, IP, and then you have the square braces, open and closed, 19. So it's 19 bytes for the offset. 
because that's where we want that last byte, that last octet, right? That 180, that's what we want. So again, you could change that to whatever position you want, or if you want to include the source, then you would include the source as well. So make sure you pick your adapter. In this case, it's my Ethernet adapter, and then make sure you have that in there, and the background will go green if you've typed it correctly, and it'll go kind of salmon-y, pinky, kind of red, uh, if it's not correct. So just please pay attention to that. Now, this is the most important step. After you've done this, please test, 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 test. Always test many times when you have a capture filter to make sure that you capture what you expect to make sure you don't have something you did not expect. In this example, I wanted the destination IP filter um, to, to be filtered out for 180. So it's easy. All I did was I went to statistics, conversation report, and I basically look for destination of 180s. So to do that traffic, generate that traffic, you can just ping different addresses that end with 180, or you can just surf around the internet and you're bound to run into a few IP addresses that end with 180. And in this case, you can see I have 39 IP addresses and they're all different and they all end in 180. So that worked. So there's, there's many, many, many applications for this type of filter. Uh, I've been asked a few times to do this um, article and video. Hope it helps. Have yourself a good day. Bye for now.